Hey everyone, that's STEM guy here. No matter where in the world your classroom is located, I hope you are having a great day. We are back with another STEM product review. This time we're gonna be taking a look at the Scratch Junior Coding Card Set. In a previous video, I reviewed the Scratch Coding Card Set. This is the Scratch Junior Coding Card Set. So if you have not watched that video yet, please go check it out. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on Scratch Junior. Now, if you are not familiar with Scratch or Scratch Junior, it is a coding program for kids. Scratch Junior is aimed at our ages, about five to eight year old students. And the thing to know about Scratch Junior, if you're thinking about using it in your classroom, is it is only available on tablets and iPads. It is not something that you can pull up on your computer. So unlike Scratch, your, your class needs access to iPads in order for these cards to be worth your while. Now I got these cards off Amazon. They retail a little bit cheaper than the scratch coding card set. I believe they were just under $16 for the 75 card set. And again, like the scratch coding card set, the immediate thing you'll notice is the box is heavy. This is a hefty box. So again, I'm someone that associates heft with quality. So I was thinking right off the bat that this was gonna be, again, a quality product. If you watched my previous video on the scratch coding card set, I knew kind of what to expect when I opened this. So the initial disappointment with the product wasn't really there. First off guys, you are not getting 75 different activities. Uh, and nowhere on the, bro on the box, nowhere on the product does it say that that's the case. What you're really getting when you open this up is a bunch of different units uh, spread across multiple different cards. So right off the bat, when I got this product, I knew that I was not getting 75 different activities. I was expecting anywhere from nine to 10 activities like in the scratch coding card set, and that was not the case. So uh, I opened up the scratch junior coding card set, and like the scratch coding card set, you're greeted with a little guide. It shows you how to download the app onto the iPads, and in the back, it tells you an overview of the different units and activities that the cards contain. The scratch coding card set had 10 activities spread over 76 cards, and each activity was about five to nine cards in length. However, the scratch junior coding card set only contains three what I will call units. The first unit, and the first one we'll talk about, is a day in the life of Kitty. A day in the life of Kitty is a super cute program in which students program a cat's life from waking up in the morning to going to school, to coming home, to having a bedtime story read to it. So it's a super duper cute program. And I mean, the kids will love it. However, <sighs> Scratch, we're my friends at Scratch Junior. I'm not sure what you were thinking when you made Wake Up With Kitty 40 cards long. 40 cards long, 40. What are we doing? No five-year-old student that I know is gonna be able to sit there and go through 40 cards in order. I don't understand what the thought process was with this. This program is super cute and super fun, but no kid is gonna have time in a classroom or the attention span in the classroom to sit down and code 40 plus cards. It's just not gonna happen. So right off the bat, almost half of the cards in this set, you could throw them away. Not really throw them away, but you're not using them in your classroom. Uh, if you're a homeschool parent or you know, you're looking to pick this up for your child to code with them, uh, sure, Wake Up Kitty or, or you know, A Day in the Life of Kitty is a great lesson to work with your child and introduce them to a lot of different aspects of coding, but it's just, it's not practical for classroom use for 40 of these cards to be used on this one activity. And I wish I knew it before getting my hands on this product because I probably would have passed on it had I known this information. The second unit is called Coding Unplugged. Now this is super cool um, for a teacher. It's not super cool for your kids. Coding Unplugged are a bunch of different activities to introduce students to programming language and thinking about writing programs without any actual device or without any actual screen in front of them, such as guiding a friend to the window or teaching someone how to make a sandwich or um, understanding the different tiles or understanding language. 
So it's, it's really good to introduce the basis of coding. And I would have liked this better had it been like a booklet um, instead of individual cards, um, because this is more of a teaching resource. This is not something that you are giving to your students to use. So this is 15 cards in length. So right off the bat, with a day in the life of Kitty, 40 cards, and Coding Unplugged, 15 cards. We have 55 cards in a 75 card set that are really not ending up in our students' hands. The last unit is called Interface. An interface is made up of 20 cards. An interface was actually what I thought I was getting when I bought the official Scratch Coding Card set because each card is a different thing. It teaches the kids how to add characters, how to add pages, how to change your background, how to copy things, how to save, how to edit colors. So this is what I was originally expecting with all of the cards in the set when I got the Scratch Coding Card set, the official one. So it's really nice to see this in the Scratch Junior set. This is stuff that's gonna end up in our students' hands. This is something that I can put around the room and students can kind of go and figure out, hey, I wanna add a character, what do I do? They can go over to the card center where it has the add a character card and flip it over and see how to add a different character in their program. And then when they decide they wanna do something else, they can bounce over to another center. So these cards are super good. They're gonna end up in the hands of the students. Um, and, and they really do a good job of explaining to the student what they're doing. Uh, just like the Scratch Coding Card set, all these cards have really beautiful colors, uh, really clear picture on what's going on, and super simple to follow directions on the back. All right, let's get to the scoring. If you're new to this channel, I score based on three criteria. The first is versatility, the second is durability, and the third is fun factor. For versatility, I gotta score this a little bit less than the Scratch Coding Cards just because we have so many cards that are really not being used and not getting in the hands of our students. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10 for versatility. The 20 cards that are gonna end up in the hands of my students are super great. They have a lot of different ways for students to customize and change the way that they do things, which is gonna express individuality and the student's artistic expression when they code. So. Versatility wise, we're looking at a five out of 10. Um, there's, again, there's not much you do with this other than stick it in the center and students learn how to code. Um, but because less of the cards are able to end up realistically in student hands, I gotta lower the score a little bit from the scratch coding card set. Factor number two is durability. Now, I wanted to give this a one again, like I did with the scratch coding cards, because again, the cards are flimsy they're gonna get messed up, especially in kindergarten through second grade students' hands. These are gonna get messed up, they're gonna get lost, they're gonna get misplaced. So you're gonna have to modify, you're gonna have to laminate these things. But the reason I'm giving it a two instead of a one is unlike the scratch coding card set, there's really not a, a unit of cards that are gonna end up in students' hands. So you don't have to worry about things getting lost as much or the order in which things are placed. So you're not gonna really have to hole punch and steal ring these. You can kind of just laminate each card and stick them around the room in different spots. So durability there is a little bit higher since I'm not gonna be worried about things getting out of order or misplaced, but the but the overall cards again need that modification. They, they need to be laminated. All right, and our last category is fun factor. The scratch coding cards, I gave a fun factor of an eight. They, every program in there was super fun and I'm really excited to get them in the hands of my students so that they can code all those fun programs. With this one, the fun factor for me is dropped significantly because there is not really any units other than A Day in the Life of Kitty that are really fun to code. And A Day in the Life of Kitty is not something that, again, 40 cards in length, I don't know what they were thinking. It's, it's just a bit much for our younger students to be able to code through that whole program in one sitting. Um, the Coding Unplugged lessons are fun but it's, it's a teacher resource. It's not something that the kids are, are interacting with with this product, it's, it's a teacher guide. And the interface cards are very educational, it's just they're not super fun. They're not coding actual games with those interface cards. So fun factor for me, I'm gonna have to give a four. Okay, that brings us to our final score. The final score for these scratch coding cards 
I'm going to give it a 3.66. Now, you might think that score is low and might think this is a product that you would pass on. I still recommend buying this. It's a great teaching resource. If you're buying this, you're buying it as a teaching resource. You're not buying it as something that you can give to your kids um, if you are a parent or pass out to your class if you are a teacher. Just because the fact that a majority of the cards are not super kid friendly. Um, they're mostly guides for educators on how to get children thinking about programming. And that big uh, kitty lesson is just, it's a bit too long. So 3.66 on this product. Uh, again, durability really kills these things because you're gonna have to make some modifications and laminate so you keep the product in good condition. If you're interested in picking this item up, I'm going to have the link in the video description box below. Also make sure you check out my video review of the official scratch coating cards as well. I like that product a lot more than these. Check it out, it's some good stuff. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.